Hey everybody and welcome, this is Gabo of catamaranfreedom.com and today I want to talk to you a little bit about fuel consumption on a catamaran. So what I've done is I've compiled a lot of data about how much each catamaran burns uh, fuel. So I'm looking at Lagoon 380s, uh, 410s, Gemini, I'm looking at what else do we have, we have Fountain, Bajo, we have a lot of those different types of bull all catamarans and then I you know check in check out how much do they burn when do they burn what rpm uh, how many engines they're using stuff like that and how long you can and how far you can travel on that um, on that cruising speed so if you want to check out all that data go into catamaranfreedom.com slash fuel and you can look into a little bit more you know deeper into the data but what I do here today I'll, I'll briefly discuss the data I've found and then I'll look into you know how you could save a little bit of fuel and um, I'll give you some tips for that okay so let's start out so looking at the data I've compiled we have uh, the average catamaran and I'm talking about something between 30 and 45 foot and and all the the boats I've looked at will draw somewhere around let's see here 0.5 to 0.7 or 0.9 gallons per hour so that would be 1.9 liters to 2.8 liters per hour uh, and that's the single engine they're just running one engine that's really fine if you want to check out what what you how much the boat you're looking into buying or if you're looking into charter or whatever uh, check out the web page and you, you have more in-depth detail and you will also find how you can calculate fuel consumption there's a um, at the bottom at the bottom of the page you'll see how you could calculate how much that engine will draw during normal conditions or how much it will burn during nor nor normal conditions that's pretty cool and also some some keynotes there um, and yeah so we have that we have distance until empty time until empty blah 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 okay so um, let's look a little bit and how you could save a little bit of fuel so you have your boat you're out uh, traveling and I'm gonna show you some of the tips we used on and on this little guy sailing the in the Bahamas and the Caribbean and uh, I'll tell you what we did and what I've compiled here so the number one thing I would say is drive your car as you would drive no <laughs> drive your boat as you how you would drive your car or at least as how your car teacher would tell you how to drive a car so he or she would tell you to accelerate slowly and then have a steady throttle right yeah, that's about the same you want to do here. You want to drive economically or echo. So that means you accelerate slowly, not burning a lot of extra fuel, and then you just stay there at a steady state. And that steady state should be somewhere around 75-80% of the engine's full throttle. So you don't want to go all out, because that's just going to put a lot of load, a lot of uh, tear and wear on your engines. Uh, you want to drop it down a little bit, 75, that's where you get a good torque, good RPM, and good fuel economy. So that'll be your first thing. Slowly up, keep it steady, and stay there. Uh, okay, the next thing I want to talk about is keeping the weight low. So this is really important. You know, the more the heavier your boat is, the more it's going to sink down into uh, to the water, and the more drag you're going to have. Uh, but the thing with weight is, it's um, the more you add, it's hard, the harder it is to push it, right? So keeping it light is kind of a like almost like a sport. <laughs> So what we did uh, on this little guy is that it was full of jerry cans up here or full of you know jugs of uh, gas, uh, diesel. Uh, the thing is we never used them. We just never used them. <laughs> so we brought way, 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 way too much of gas uh, or diesel. And it's just, it's just dead weight. We just have to pay for bringing it along. And the thing is diesel also gets old. So when it's too old, you don't really want to put it into your engine. So Because you don't want to... If you're driving a car and it stops, it's like, okay, it stopped, right? But if you're driving a boat and it stops in the middle of the ocean, that's more of a sucky situation, I would say. So bring what you need for the trip and then just add a little bit. Don't add too much, right? If you're doing a weekend, don't bring too much. Okay, so we got the weight down. Um, the next thing is, what do you want to do? You want to make it easy for your engine to work. So if you have your engine powering on, like, let's say one engine, and you add a sail, you can basically see that sail as an extra engine, an engine that doesn't burn any fuel. So it's going to make this engine, you know, work uh, easier and have, like, less resistance, and you're going to go faster, and you're going to burn less fuel. 
that's pretty sweet. Uh, the other way to go faster is to add the other engine, but if you do that, yeah, we'll talk more about it later. But it's gonna add a, a lot of a lot of dollars to your fuel cost. <laughs> Okay, the next thing is I want to I want to make sure you keep your hulls and your propeller clean So, you know, you're basically pushing this giant thing with two hulls through the water and There's gonna be friction and the more friction you have the less less um, and the more energy you have to put into the uh, The boat to, to make it move so you want to make the hulls smooth and you want to make the propeller smooth and propellers are not that much about drag more than it is about efficiency of propulsion right so if you have a very old propeller that is like really there's a lot of stuff growing on it it just spins water it's not really pushing the boat it just spins a lot of water so make make sure they're tuned in and they're like really nice um another thing you can do is like be smart about the way you, you use your boat don't go straight into the wind if you can go a little bit offset it that makes sense and if you, you can go like close to shore where it might be a different type of wind that makes sense because the catamaran is so big it's gonna it's basically like you know having a truck like if there's so much wind pushing onto it so it's gonna take a lot more fuel to move it mm. coming back to the running one or two engines ish, uh, question is if you run two engines you can go a little bit faster but you won't go twice as fast but you you're gonna burn more than twice as much uh, fuel because you you turn on one engine you have you know hundred percent you turn on another one you have basically two hundred percent because um, it, like the drag doesn't it it increases a lot but uh, you need to put a lot of energy into it all. no matter so uh, uh, using one engine, keeping it at 75-80% is good. Uh, using two engines and 75-80% is not going to give you double the knots. It might give you two knots more, but it's going to you know, make you pay 50, 60, 70% more. Uh, and uh, you can see that in the, in the data we put up on, on the webpage, so go dive into that if you want to. But uh, if you want to go you know, fuel efficiency wise, go for one engine. And keep your engines in good shape. You want to make them, you know, well maintained. And I'm not saying like do stupid maintenance. Just be smart about it. Just make sure your air filters are good, so you get the right amount of air into the engine um, and diesel at the same time. So it's not not something wrong with the fuel mixture. Mm, if you don't know, if you already have a boat, or you want to make you want to be, you know, make sure it does. It burns what you think it burns you could actually track uh, track it with a little device so you just disconnect the, the fuel supply put in this little tracker in here and then you you know you take notes or it does it takes the notes digitally there are those as well and that makes you see you know at this rpm it's this much and every time we go this stretch it burns this much and it's super valuable and that makes you be able to plan a lot better because if you know how much it uh, how much it burns you can plan way better and you don't end up like the idiots on this boat bring too much gas okay so screw this guy okay that's cool track your fuel consumption and another cool thing i think is use like on a catamaran using a, a foldable prop is pretty sweet so you're running two engines right so one is uh, one uh, prop has folded out and it's spinning but the other one is still like uh, in the uh, folded position so this has a, like not a lot of drag at all but this one has full torque and full propulsion which kind of makes sense because if you uh, you um, use this one to, to drive the boat forward and this one is just basically a brake it's gonna, just gonna break the boat right and it's gonna turn into almost a generator because uh, this one's gonna spin but it's not gonna you know do you any good so uh, foldable prop on a cat is pretty cool I think I like the idea mm. and if you want to go really cheap on fuel uh, on diesel consumption go electric I think it's pretty cool I mean there's okay the technology isn't really there yet but it's a cool way you should definitely check it out and I really enjoy I really like the idea of running it on lithium-ion batteries and solar charging it and stuff like that the range is gonna be like pretty sucky compared to diesel but hey, it's cool pretty cool idea so that's like the um, the short version if you want to you want to um, uh, want to understand how you can calculate fuel consumptions and you want to understand why catamarans are more efficient than, than regular keelboats it's all in there um, there's a little bit of a sheet 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 <laughs> so you can you know bring it on your trip and make sure okay did I plan enough fuel stuff like that um, there's some stuff on how long you can run your uh, your engine on full throttle 
um, yeah, stuff like that. I think more information and I think it'll be uh, valuable for some of you guys out there. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care.